So um, let me talk about a few things. I feel like it's a little bit hard for me to um, narrow down this energy, okay? And it's a little bit all over the place, actually. So let me try my best to just explain it through some type of a... Let's talk about a person, like through some type of a story. Because I feel... I feel like things are a little bit complicated in your world when it comes to love and when it comes to what do I want out of life. There are a lot of sp uh, cards here that indicate to me a lot of uh, this sense of spiritual awareness that's happening within you. You're diving deep and you're trying to figure out why am I doing these things? Why am I doing the chasing? Why does someone have such a huge impact on me? Why do they touch me at such a profound soul level if the relationship is not taking off? If I'm not meant to be with them, why do we have this really, really, really strong emotional soul connection? So you're questioning a lot of these realities that, are, um, that you're coming to a head with. And you're questioning, like, the whys of the universe because things are not making sense, right? What you feel and what you see in your physical reality do not match up. And it can be really frustrating as a fire sign for you to get mixed messages. And so what I'm seeing is you're, you're tired. You're physically very, very, very tired. And you want a lot of clarity. So this is a card here about spiritual ascension. Going within to find the answers. And I feel for some of you, the question is, why do I want people or why am I attracting people who are not emotionally available? Why do I want a challenge in everything that I do? It's because you're a fire sign. Fire signs, especially you and the Aries, you guys need to feel alive through that sense of competition. It could be, you know, testing yourself, pushing yourself past your limits to know your limitations and to know uh, what you're capable of achieving. But in a way, in relationships, it's the thrill of the chase. It's wanting something that is slightly out of reach because it poses as a challenge. And I feel some of you are coming into the sense of awareness where you find yourself attracted to people who are a little bit icy, who are a little bit stern, who embodies that person that's like very self-contained, very strong. But deep down, they're very, very emotionally unavailable. And you might have figured out that, you know, this is a cycle that you found yourself in. And, and why does it keep happening? And so you're looking within for answers to try to break these cycles and to try to figure out what exactly am I doing? What vibes am I sending out to the people around me? Why am I only attracted to that one type? Sagittarius women, for those who are watching, um, Sagittarius, it's a very masculine sign. And I feel like your sense of independence, it's so, um, it's, it's so like pronounced and prevalent upon first meeting you, whoever it is that you're interested in, they sense that right away. And I feel like you assert your independence in a way that might be a little bit threatening. It might be a little bit too much. And so the people that are more, you know, security oriented, they might not sense that they can handle you. They might be very intimidated. And so they might not come towards you. And then the ones that do come towards you, they themselves might want the challenge just to conquer you, just to, to have that acquisition. So they see it as a challenge. They see it as a conquest. And once they have conquered you, they might not stay around. So this is something you might want to be, you know, a little bit. Um, it's not your fault, Sagittarius. It's not your fault. 
but it's really important to you know kind of see the aura that we're um, kind of um, putting out there how it's being received by other people and whether or not we like the outcome whether or not we like what is being presented okay and if we don't like it what can we do to change it and I feel like for some of you you could care less what people think right but lately in the relationship department you feel like you have to make some changes to attract the type of lover that you want and what you're you're coming across is you you encounter people that you have a lot of just really really intense you know chemistry with okay this is a card about seduction and it's also greatly it's that animalistic desire within us it's greatly about the conquest the chase the cat and mouse the the prey and the predator this um endless dance between two people and the angel is kind of um, soothing the beast, right? So it's really telling you, you know, it, it's, it's almost like you can't be domesticated. You don't want to succumb to, un, to you, you don't want to be under somebody else's beck and call. But at the same time, you know, there's some peace here. There's some peace and serenity to find somebody that you can completely trust that you can release this, you know, animalistic side of you. It's someone who won't judge you for who you are and someone who just accepts you. There's peace and, and harmony in this. And so you're being pulled in two different directions as to, you know, what you're looking for, but also being very, very fearful about losing your independence. Being fearful about showing that softer side of you. Being fearful about telling somebody you know, as simple as, hey, you look really nice today. I like the way your hair, uh, you do your hair. Or, you know, that blouse looks really good on you. Or you smell nice. You know, like the, 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 the normal everyday appreciation, like expression of appreciation or expression like to, to flatter somebody. It's really hard to come by for an, uh, a Sagittarius. And so when you talk, you feel like it's supposed to be a compliment, but it came out wrong, right? And then it drives the other person away because they're confused. They don't know if you were mocking them or if you were paying them a compliment. And so every day in the mirror, what you need to do is you need to say these positive affirmations. Talk to yourself, flatter yourself, compliment yourself. Because that process, it, it, the learning process, how to compliment somebody so that it sounds genuine, it starts from within, okay? And I feel many of you have been really, really, really hard on yourself. And I feel for many of you, you don't even know how to compliment yourself. When you don't know how to compliment yourself, you can't compliment another person and have it sound right and have it sound sincere, even though you meant it, right? And so don't be so hard on yourself. Start the journey within. Start with yourself and then bring that out to other people. And it's going to dramatically shift and change the way that you relate to other people, especially people that you love, people that you want so much to express your feelings to, but you don't know how, or, you know, it comes out wrong. But I feel there is a big sense here of mistrust. It's like you're not trusting somebody enough, and rightfully so, so that you don't feel comfortable being vulnerable around them. So in your relationship sector, stoppage in communication, four of swords, okay? This is you trying to balance yourself. So I feel like some situation, somebody has got you very, very rattled. You can't think straight. You can't really listen to your higher calling. You don't know what's right and wrong. And you're frustrated as well. You're tired. And you're just like, I can't really expend so much thought and energy into this. This person is occupying all of my time. When I'm supposed to be at home alone or even sleeping, I'm not sleeping. I'm thinking about them. And it can be very frustrating when you feel like you're embodying the energy and the body and the thought that aren't yours when you're not in control of your own faculties 
and you're like against your will thinking about a person, it can feel very frustrating. And the person that you're dealing with here, I have the Two of Swords. You retreat, and so they wonder, what's going on with the Sagittarius? Don't they like me? Where are they? And they kind of advance forward as well. You know, um, I see this feather here. Big feather. It's like somebody who tickles your fancy or somebody that's trying to get a rise out of you. They're trying to tickle you. They're trying to make you laugh. They're trying to, you know, show they're interested with the way that they communicate. You could be dealing with an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. But I feel like there are a lot of signs in this spread. So what I feel is this person is quite humorous. They sense that you like them, but they also feel like you're blowing hot and cold. You're a fire sign. You're exhibiting air energy. So they feel like you're being, um, you're blowing hot and cold. They're very confused as well. So one minute you're like, you know, gunning for them. And then the next you retreat. So they're just a little bit kind of apprehensive. And they do think about you. And at the heart of the reading, we do have the strength card, which indicates, excuse me, a lot of attraction, but also a lot of communication that has gone awry because, you know, we're talking a human and a beast where they might not even speak the same language. So if there is communication, it has gone into that twilight zone where two parties cannot understand and comprehend each other. And so we need to start from scratch. We need to kind of like take this rest that you need, move away from the person and approach them when you are a little bit more level-headed and clear-headed and approach them with communication that is a little bit less forceful, that's a little bit more gentle. So you have some self-work that you need to do, complimenting yourself, doing the positive affirmation, build up your self-confidence so that when you approach this person, everything comes out the way that it should, okay? Um, I'm also feeling the partner sees you as someone who's a little bit flirtatious. They might see you as someone who has a lot of options, who has a lot of choices, who's a little bit like um, of a, you know, someone who has been, who has a lot of sexual exper uh, experimentation or who has been very experimental when it comes to relationship. That's how they see you. They tease you about it or they think that about you. But I don't think it's in a negative, derogatory way. I feel like they just are a little bit intimidated because they feel like you have a lot of suitors. So you must have gone on a lot of dates. You must must have a lot of uh, people that you have slept with, right? And their energy here is the Nine of Wands. They're on the defense. They're not sure because you're withdrawing. They're not sure if they should move forward. They're not sure if you're giving them the signals. They're not sure if you've got somebody else. And what I conclude here is um, whatever work you need to do on yourself, do it. Take the time to do it. But it seems to me like you are blocking somebody out because there's like some teasing. You feel like they're a tease. And it's funny because uh, a lot of people think Sagittarius are a major tease. So the, the, the script is kind of flipped here. You think they're a tease, you don't like it. You don't like to be, you know, like wound up around anybody's fingers. And that's what it feels like in this situation. And so you withdraw possibly out of resentment as well. And now they're very confused. But I, I definitely see mutual attraction between you and, and, and another person. And honestly, honesty is the best policy when we're dealing with another person. And I know you appreciate that. So maybe just, you know, um, swing open their door and tell them you need to stop being a tease. You know, maybe you need to just tell them straight up, like, I really like you, but you're acting like such a T, so I don't know if I can trust you. And I feel like that will actually help the situation. I, I feel like it can. So someone, you feel someone is like playing with you, toying with you, or teasing you, 
and you don't like it. And they're seeing you as someone who is a tease. And so they thought you would enjoy it. So mirroring energy that I'm sensing here. Um, I'm going to pull out one card for you, okay, for your spiritual advice. What you need to do. What should the Sagittarius do in this situation when we have a mirroring energy? I don't like to do mirroring energies mainly because it flows both ways and it's really uh, a little bit more difficult to read but also in terms of finding solutions it's not very cut and dry right so let's see what advice do you have here for the Sagittarius people because I can feel them getting frustrated I have here the devil which is not a great clarifier um, the devil is you know very very intense lust very intense chemistry and sort of like a merry-go-around between two people that is not very healthy and so if we're looking at the strength card which is really intense attraction the devil which is really intense chemistry I feel like this is a situation that's very uh, that feeds on the ego of the other person you know they like to to get under your skin to feel like they're in control of the situation um, they're definitely very destabilized and intimidated by you. And so they feel like they have to get the upper hand by having you under their spell, by having you under their control, by having you wound up around their fingers and kind of like get under your skin and get a rise out of you whenever they can. And so the, the, the uh, connection might be a little bit toxic here. Um, Sagittarius, I feel like Honesty is the best policy. You should voice your opinion with this person. Don't emotionally, you know, close off. Don't cut off communication. Get to the bottom of it, okay? You're very good at that and you you need to because I feel like you want to understand some things, okay? Um, they will be receptive because I feel like the energies are mirrored. Nine of Wands, Nine of Cups, and both of these are sword energies. And then we have the devil and the strength card. The, the devil and the angel. So it's the feelings and the communication will be reciprocated. If you talk, they'll listen. And then they'll interject, you know. But they'll listen. And they'll get to the bottom of it with you. So I don't feel like it's detrimental to, you know, ask questions. So let me talk about other areas of your life. So once again, I have two very spiritual cards that are coming into the picture. We have the hangman. And um, once again, I'm getting, I, I got this like a few months ago. I think it was March and April. And then also December. So December last year, your birthday time, March and then April. And this is a card about, you know, waking up from a slumber. Where did the time go? What have I do, been doing all this time? What am I learning? Where's my money? Like, what have I been spending my, my money on? So all of those questions from, you know, March and April are coming back. And I feel it's, it's almost like I've lived through this. Why didn't I learn it the first time? You're being really hard on yourself this month. I've been there, I've done that multiple times in the past and it gave me the same result. Why didn't I learn? Why am I going back to the same pattern? Why am I doing the same things? Why am I not learning from past experiences? And so you're kind of beating yourself up over things. And I see you being a recluse, kind of shutting people off too, you know, putting your sword up, putting, resurrecting your walls, not letting people get close to you because you feel a certain way about yourself. You're being really hard on yourself. You're giving yourself a lot of negative self-talk and this is not, it's not healthy to do that. It's not healthy in terms of your self-esteem, but it's also not healthy when you're trying to attract and manifest positive things to come into your life. There is a gentle reminder here from your spirit guides, okay? Do what you need to do. Get over the um, lack of inactivity. If you need to take some time off and just kind of uh, shut your door, shut your windows, turn off your phone, 
and strategize. What do I need to do to get myself into a better financial situation? What do I need to do so that I can break these patterns about attracting, you know, uh, people who are egotistical, for example? What do I need to do to kind of get myself career-wise on the right path? By all means, shut people out, spend a day, get it out of your system, draw yourself a game plan, and then execute, okay? Don't just sit in this state of contemplation and this state of planning, but yet not putting those plans to action, okay? This is a card about an impasse. No one's making a move, and you're definitely not making a move. And so I feel as if you might benefit from asking some people for advice. You know, a financial, seeing a financial consultant, seeing a grief counselor, seeing even a, a banker, somebody that can really set you up and give you some type of a technical advice so that you can move forward. They can calm your nerves. They can make the situation a lot clearer. They can give you practical advice and they can stop you from being so hard on yourself in the future. Um, I keep seeing here, there is a person who is in, in a position of authority. They want to offer you some work projects, okay, with the Emperor and the Knight of Cups. But they feel like you're not ready. So if you feel you're ready, you need to embody that energy and you need to, you know, show them that you're ready. They're waiting around for you to become ready. They're waiting for you, for you to kind of like up the ante, for you to grow a little bit, for you to mature and for you to come to them. So don't be in this state of indecisiveness. And I feel like it could even be a love partner. Somebody's waiting for you to come to them. But they're seeing you take your sweet time. They're seeing you sequestering yourself and keeping yourself very isolated. And they want to reach out. But it's almost like you're withdrawing and it's hard for them to reach out. So Sagittarius, um, I hope the reading makes sense. It's a little bit complicated. I feel like you're being, you're, you're like hiding behind this cloud of really strong emotions so I hope the reading is helpful. I hope that it's applicable as you, you know, navigate the energy for this week. I hope it is useful for you. But um, I just, you know, wonder if you're in this state, what's the best thing that you can do? The best thing that you can do is plant your feet in the present moment. And take care of practical responsibilities. Take care of the things that are immediately in front of you. And don't think so far about, you know, into the future. What's going to happen three months from now? What's going to happen if I move? What's going to happen next year when I change job? Those things are in the future. They haven't happened yet. They're not in front of you. Don't worry about them. Don't work yourself into a state of anxiety, worrying about things that may or may not be even relevant for you right now. So focus on the here and now. Take care of the here and now. Don't pine over things that have happened. Don't be so hard on yourself. And, you know, do not speak to yourself with harsh words, okay? Okay.